G'day folks, Uncle Nackers here. Hey, check out my snazzy new foldable step stool. What an absolute little ripper. I love it. Made from scrap wood and a couple of old hinges and for the total cost of 20 bucks, I'm absolutely stoked. And the handy bonus is, is that if you don't want to use it as a step stool, you can use it just as a stool or as an awesome home decor piece. Now by rights, this should be a pretty simple project. I'm just a bit concerned about how the whole folding mechanism is going to work and whether or not it's going to support my hulking Adonis type physique. <laughs> Don't wish to brag, but uh, back in the day, now this is going to be a scrap wood project as per usual and for the seat all I'm using are these old scraps of hardwood flooring that I had left over from our house renovation and for the legs just some bits and bobs from a mangy old pallet that I found on the side of the road. Let's get cracking. Now starting with the seat, this is what we've got. This is the underside and the boards are tongue and groove. So they slot in together just like that and we'll glue and clamp these down a bit later on. Now the diameter for the circle for the seat is 320 millimeters, which is a smidge larger than 11 and three quarters of an inch. The next thing we need to do is to get a straight edge on one side and to do that, just grab a piece of wood bang it up against it and Bob's your uncle. Now from this point here, from that edge, come in 10 millimeters, roughly half an inch, and then mark a line from the top down to the bottom. Now if you've got room, come across an inch. It doesn't really matter. And from here, we come across our 320 millimeters over to this side and mark that line. Now from those two fresh marks, come in 30 millimeters, which is a whisker under an inch and a quarter, and place a mark top and bottom on both sides. Now I've got two pieces of pellet wood here, 70 millimeters wide, which is about two and three quarters of an inch. Now I'm going to place these on those new marks and then just simply glue and screw in place. That's not coming apart anytime soon. Let's give it 24 hours to dry. We'll come back tomorrow for stage two. There you go. That didn't turn out too bad at all. A bit of a sand and a bit of a polish, and I reckon this is gonna come up beautiful. With the seat now glued up, our next mission is to cut this into a circle, and to do that, just simply transfer those two outside black marks to the front of the seat, just like that there and there and then draw a line from corner to corner and where the two lines intersect that's our center and mark that with an x now i'll be cutting my circle out with my router complete with my homemade circle cutting jig if you don't have this set up don't panic a jigsaw will do the trick nicely now just a quick tip before you get committed and you're at that point of no return get yourself a piece of scrap and do a test run just to make sure that you've got the right dimension. And let's see what we've got. Look at that. A perfect circle. Beautiful. Now with the seat, because it's old hardwood, I found it a bit splintery. And let's face it, you don't want a splinter in your bum. So all I did was pull out the old tin of epoxy. I dug out all those nooks and crannies, filled those in with the epoxy, and we'll come back later and sand that back. Alrighty, let's make those legs. Oh yeah, before I forget, just very quickly, if you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button down below. Good stuff. Now starting with the front two legs of the step stool, I'm just using pallet wood. 
It's 20 millimeters thick, which is about three quarters of an inch, and it's 90 millimeters or three and a half inches wide. And I'll be cutting both boards to a length of 715 millimeters, which is about 28 and one eighth of an inch from the long point to the short point on both boards. Now I'll be cutting the bottoms and the tops on both boards to an angle of 21 degrees. Now we want to set our saw to 21 degrees, which is that mark right there. And lock it off. Speaking of stools, have you ever wondered why a milking stool only has three legs? I think it's because the cow has the udder. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Alrighty, I'll be off. So the door is, yep, got it. Stop looking, under control. Now the front two legs aren't going to sit straight up and down just like that. They're going to taper in toward the top, which means that down the bottom, we'll need to cut a six degree bevel on that angled cut so the leg sits nice and flat on the ground and the same cut to the top so the seat sits nice and flat. Now you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but you'll get a better result if you do. Now for the back two legs, again, we're making these out of pallet wood. These are about 20 millimeters thick, which is roughly three quarters of an inch. And the boards are 70 millimeters wide, which is about two and three quarters of an inch. Now, as far as the length goes, I've cut both of these boards at 660 millimeters, which is roughly 26 inches from the long point to the short point. Now, because these legs are going to be splayed, which means they are wider at the bottom than at the top, I've gone ahead and I've cut a six degree angle on the bottoms and the tops of both of these legs, as you can see right here. And as well as that, I've gone ahead and I've cut a six degree bevel on the bottoms and the tops of both legs. That way, hopefully, everything should sit nice and flat. Now to keep these two legs from spreading apart, we need a couple of braces. One down the bottom and one flush up on the top of those legs. Now the one down the bottom here, come up from the bottom of our leg, about 100 millimeters, which is roughly four inches, to the underside of our brace, and we're good to go. Now these are going to be attached to the legs with a simple halving joint, so there's no fancy joinery here. Now, from the outside of the legs on the bottom, from there to there, we are 355 millimeters, which is about 14 inches, and all the way up the top, from the outside to the outside, we're 210 millimeters, which is about eight and a quarter of an inch. Now to make that halving joint, all I've done is with a pencil, is I've marked half the thickness of that board, just like that, and then with your circular saw unplugged, or the battery taken out of it, bring it across, and then adjust the depth of that blade until it just kisses that line, lock it off, and then we'll run a series of cuts along that board and then finish it off with a chisel. Beautiful. Now with those half lap joints all checked out, you can see how when you check out half of that material and half of that material, you finish up with a really smooth flat joint. Now we'll cut this excess off here and here later on, but for now I wanna give this a quick sand and then we'll come back to glue and screw together. Now, if you're interested in following along with me with these projects, you can find all the tools I use in this video linked in the description box down below.
So there's those back legs all done, and I have to say, they're looking pretty good. Now all we need to do now is to go back to those two front legs to cut the steps in. Now these two pieces here are the front legs, and as you can see, I've marked out the rebates on the front two legs for our steps. Now as you can see, the angle for our step or our rebate is the same as what we cut on the bottom and the top of these front two legs. Now as far as distances go, for our first step, from the bottom, on the long point, we've come up 255 millimetres, which is 10 inches. I've put a mark there, and then I've gone down the thickness of our tread or our step, and we'll trench that out. Now for the second step, we've come up from the bottom, from the long point, all the way up to 510 millimetres, or 20 inches. I've put a mark there, and again, we've gone down the thickness of our tread or our step, and we'll trench that out. Now hopefully this tread should fit. There you go, that's beautiful. Spot on, awesome. Now with those rebates cut for the steps, I've gone ahead and I've cut a couple of small blocks with a 21 degree angle on the top and the bottom, as well as a 45 degree bevel on the bottom as well, just for looks, and a six degree bevel on top. And what I'm going to do with these is screw them to the top of each leg, which will give the seat a bit of extra support, as well as giving it a bit more room for the hinge to screw to. Now before I go ahead and attempt to assemble this step stool, fingers crossed it's still going to work, is that I've been doing a bit of rustification work on these pallet wood legs, because I think they're looking just a bit too fresh and boring if you know what I mean. So to help speed up the process, I've just got some black paint here, a piece of old metal that you bang into the wood, wire brush, same thing, hand saw, give that a bit of a tap, and even an old chisel, just like that. And these are all the tools you can use to help create that aged appearance. And that's the end result, and you can see how the black paint has gone into those little holes and indentations. I think that's a better looking finish. Now when it comes time for you to cut your step to size, it's really simple. Just remember that down the bottom, we are 355 millimeters wide, and up top, we're 215 millimeters wide. Brace it off to make it nice and secure, and then if I can pull this step out, hang on a sec, here we go, that was easier than I thought. I've cut a six degree bevel on both ends with the long point being on the bottom. And if I turn the step over, I've cut it to a width of 135 millimeters, which is about five and a quarter of an inch. And if I turn it over to the back, you can see that I've cut a bevel of 21 degrees with the long point being on top. And then what I think I'll do is I'll cut a bit of a curve on the front just to make it look a bit fancier. So there's those front steps all done and dusted, and I have to say, I am absolutely stoked in how they turned out. Now, the next step, this is what I've been concerned about the entire time, and that is attaching the hinges and seeing whether this thing actually folds up, or have I indeed wasted an entire weekend. This is one of those times I wish I had a Japanese saw. And there you have it. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And there you have it. That is a really nice round over. Love it. 
Now with the hinges, I'm using these 75 millimeter or three inch strap hinges, which are these guys over here. Now, these are going to set you back about five bucks a set. We'll need two sets, so all up around $10. Now this hinge here, this is going to be for the back set of legs, and this hinge is going to be for the front set of legs. Now you'll notice how with my grinder on one side, I've cut this back to a length of 45 millimeters, which is about an inch and three quarters, and then drilled an extra hole right there. Now here's a really good tip when attaching your hinge to your front leg, and that is centralize it, but just make sure that the front of your hinge lines up with the angle of the leg, and also that the hinge finishes up flush on top, just like that, and you're good to go. Now for the folding mechanism, this is what I've worked out. These are the front legs, they'll fold back just like that, and the back legs will come up and down in a similar type of fashion. Now, the back legs and the front legs, I've centered those over those outside pieces of pallet wood, and the position for this hinge on the front leg, all I've done is I've come back from the front of the leg, back 20 millimeters, which is about three quarters of an inch, and then screwed down that hinge. Now for the back legs, I've positioned those about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch away from that hinge down there. And if we come around to the front, you'll notice that with the legs centered over those two outside pieces of pallet wood, the two hinges on both sides and down the bottom are basically centered on each leg. Now, to position those hinges correctly, all you need to do is, as you see it now, Place the legs on top of that seat base on about a six degree angle, and then grab your hinges, slide them hard up against that leg, hard down on the base, screw in place, and you're good to go. Now one more quick job is we need to stop those legs from spreading apart, and we also need those legs to work in unison. So I've got this bit of flat bar, metal flat bar, it's 20 millimeters wide by three millimeters thick, which I think is about three quarters of an inch by one eighth of an inch, and I'll cut two of these at 420 millimeters, which is about 16 and a half inches, and I'll screw these to the legs of the step stool. Now for those metal braces, I've attached one on this side and one on the other side over there. Now, from the underside of our seat, we come down 45 millimeters, which is about an inch and three quarters, and then we come in from the edge, 15 millimeters, which is a touch over half an inch, and drive in that screw. And to attach that metal bracket down below, we come up from the bottom, roughly 250 millimeters, which is about nine and three quarters of an inch, and drive a screw smack in the center of that leg. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about the 400 pound load capacity, but that looks good, and that's the main thing. Now there's one last job to do, and that's to give this a couple of coats with a clear satin varnish, and then come back for the two big tests. Will it hold my weight? Does it even fold? Or has this been an absolute total failure? Stay tuned. Righto folks, it's the moment of truth. Test number one, does the step stool fold? Let's find out. Okay, here we go. I'm a little bit nervous. Now the principle is, is to put your fingers through the grip at the front, hold down at the back, then just lift and tilt, and check that out. That is awesome. Works like an absolute charm. Love it. Now, just in case you're wondering, this is how the whole folding mechanism works and looks. Now, I have to say that even though it's very simple in its design, it's really effective at what it does. 
Okay, time for the big one. Test number two. Will this little fella support my 220 pounds of 54 year old blubber? Let's give it a go. Step number one. Feels good. Here you go. Tick. Step number two. Sorry about the view. Yeah, I hope I don't fall off. Oh, check that out. What an absolute little ripper. And I've got to say, that is a big relief. I'm happy with that. Now, as well as being a very handy little step stool, I have to say that as a stool itself, it's actually very good. And just between you, me and the fence post, it's really comfortable as well. I think I need a beer after all that. Now, if you want to see more projects just like this one, do yourself a favour and check out my favourite top three scrap wood project playlists. And I hope to see you over there very shortly. Cheers.